morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church in Normandy. It is September the 6th, 2020. Our service begins. I invite you to stand as we sing on Jordan's Stormy Banks I Stand, 724. Don't forget 
the Elam House will be closed tomorrow because it's a holiday. This week's anniversary this is going to be Thursday, the 10th of September, and that's Carl and Linda Brown. And I talked to her last Sunday, and she assures me they're great, good, and a whole bit. But since she's responsible for her 100 year old aunt, the one down there in Anderson, and for Carl, she can't afford to get sick, so they just don't get out. So let's sing happy anniversary to the Browns. Let's bow for prayer. Lord Jesus, you always extend your mercy to us. And through your acts of healing, you make known your love toward us. You reach out to us when we are in desperate need of you. Help us, Lord God, that we would take the love and the grace that you so freely extend to us and that we would extend that love and grace to others. 
We ask, Lord God, that people who do not know you right now will come to know you because of our love for you and our, and our love for them. Help us, God, to be obedient to your ways. And we do ask all of this in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
I invite you to stand as we join together in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. Disciple just is a follower 
of Jesus. And I think that's what God wants us to do most of all, is to help people who don't know Jesus right now come to know Jesus through our witness of the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, there are times when we, we wonder, well, what in the world am I supposed to do? You know, I've said it uh, before, and I'll probably say it again. Every one of us has a call on our lives. There's something that God wants each one of us to do. And, and I think a part of our maturing in the faith is figuring out what that is. And, and I think there are times when we, we figure out what that is, and we do it, and then maybe we're in between. And we're like, okay, we're waiting for the next thing that God wants us to do. And so when, when someone says, well, I'm not exactly sure what God wants me to do, I often go to one of Jesus' parables. Now, this is not one of the kingdom of heaven parables, but, but it's in Matthew 25. It's the parable of the sheep and the goats. You know, where Jesus says, okay, I'm going to put the sheep on the right hand, the goats on the left hand, and then I'm going to say to those on my right hand, I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. And you welcomed me. I was naked. You gave me clothing. I was sick. You took care of me. I was in prison. You visited me. Then the righteous will ask him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or, or thirsty? Or when was it we saw you a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? And the king will answer them. Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who remembers I my, my family, you did it to me. And then, and then though, to the one on the left, it goes through the whole thing again. It says, you know, I was hungry, you didn't give me food, thirsty and no water, naked, no clothing. You know, I was, you didn't welcome me, you didn't visit me. And, uh, and then they say, well, Lord, when did we not see you and you know, all of that? And then, and, then the, and then the leader goes, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And so if we ever are in doubt about, well, I'm not exactly sure right now what God wants me to do, I would encourage us to go to Matthew 25 and, and, and follow what that scripture says to do and feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, give clothes, clothing to the naked, to welcome strangers, to visit those who are sick and in prison. That that, that is something that we can do when we're not exactly sure what it is that God wants us to do. So the kingdom of heaven, and we've got all these parables that, that, that start off that way. The kingdom of heaven is like, and, and we pray in our Lord's Prayer, which we'll pray that together in just a little bit. You know, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, and my view of all of this is that when we start our relationship with Christ, when we when we begin whatever it is and we have Christ in our life and we start living our life with Christ, in my view for us, that's when the kingdom of heaven begins for us. The kingdom of heaven, in my view, is a here and a now. It's not something that's going to start later in some time in the future. And one of the things that I want to just talk about for a minute is, is when we experience the relationship that God wants to have with us, we experience the joy that is the salvation that God wants to give to us. You know, over the last, uh, actually the last few months, we've been looking at uh, King David, and, and we've gone a couple of times to David's prayer of repentance in Psalm 51, after he committed adultery and murder, and, and then he repented. Uh, Psalm 51 is that repentance. And one of the verses in Psalm 51 is this, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain a willing is sustain in me a willing spirit. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. So many of us we get to a point where there's no joy in our life and we start to ask ourselves, well, where in the world? Did the joy go? And, and, and sometimes the answer is there's sin in our life that is separating us from God and, and keeping us from the joy that God wants us to experience. Sometimes I think, sometimes I think we, we start to search for joy where joy really doesn't exist. We maybe think that we're going to get joy from our wealth or joy from our job or joy from our friends or joy from something else that's really not a source 
of joy because, because joy, I believe, comes from our relationship with God, Jesus, and, and the Holy Spirit. There's a verse in John, John 15, 11. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Oh, that we can always be in a place where we are living in the joy of the salvation that God wants to give to us. And you know, our, 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 our joy sometimes can be, I think, we, we, we sometimes start to miss our joy when we're being tested or when, or when things just aren't quite going our way. And it's so helpful to remember those words from Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. When I'm surrounded by my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. You set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In Psalm 23, no matter where we are, God is with us. And I believe that if we can, can, can see our way through, we can get back to that joy that God wants for us to have. So we're going to spend just a moment looking at this parable of the mustard seed, that, that it's the smallest of seeds, and it grows to be a bush, a large tree, even, even birds can land in it and build nests in it. And, and, and so as we think about that as it relates to the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven begins from something that is very, very small. You know, uh, for Vacation Bible School, there have been years when we have purchased the little packets of mustard seeds and we've, we've glued them with Elmer's glue to like index cards. And, and if I were to hold one of those index cards up right now, it's likely that you would not be able to see the, the mustard seed because it would be just a real small speck. And I don't know that it's the smallest seed that's out there, but a mustard seed is pretty, pretty small. And, and, and so when, when, we, when we think about the kingdom of heaven, often we think the kingdom of heaven is going to be this huge, gigantic thing. But what we find is that, that, that it begins with something very, very small. Almost, it's not nothing, but it, it almost seems like it could be nothing. You know, I think about some of the miracles that Jesus performed. Especially the one in John chapter 6 about the feeding of the, of the 5,000. And how, and how Jesus and his disciples are there. And Jesus is kind of checking and testing his disciples a little bit. And he says, you know, where are we going to get all this food to feed all these people? And, and, and all of a sudden, all they had was a young boy with his lunch. And so for thousands of people, they had one boy's lunch. You know, and, and that seems like... When you think about what you're trying to do, it seems like nothing, or almost nothing. Something pretty small. Yet you know, we know, as we remember the miracle, that the 5,000 were fed, and then they had 12 baskets left over. So just, just as we think about the kingdom of heaven as like a small mustard seed that grows into a, a tree, we think about that miracle where just, just a small lunch feeds thousands upon thousands and there's food left over. You know, I think about too, there was the, there was the leader that comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus gives him an answer and, and then the leader goes, oh, I've done all of that. And Jesus says, well, one more thing. Go and sell all you have and give it to the poor. And I can't help but wonder as you think about that, Jesus was saying, hey, if you want to, if you want to get to start the, with the kingdom of heaven, you have to get your play, get, get you to a place where, where you don't have a lot of things in the way of you entering the kingdom of heaven. In some ways you could say he was telling that leader, let everything go so that what you have is small and then you can begin to live in the relationship with me that you say you want to have. 
You see, if we're interested in experiencing the kingdom of heaven in the here and now, I think the parable of the mustard seed is encouraging us to start small. To look for that little seed that when we, when we plant it, there's the potential to grow into something really, really large. And I think if we, we, we spent some time looking through scripture, we would see that that's how it works. So, want to experience the kingdom of heaven? Have nothing or very little is maybe the best place to start. You know, experiencing the kingdom of heaven is not about what we bring. It's about what God brings. It's about emptying ourselves so that we're available, so that there's not a whole lot here to, to get in the way of what God wants to pour into our lives. I, I read a story about uh, Nancy, and I think it's important to, to say that, that this is not Nancy. This is some <laughs> other Nancy, perhaps in another state far, far away. You know, I didn't make this clarification of Flynn. I may have to fix it next week. We'll see. <laughs> So Nancy remembers as a child hearing the tip-tap of a cane on the sidewalk. It was an old man in her town, been for me for years, his, his rough, knotted hands clutching the cane. But this man had a particular custom as he roamed the streets of the small town. When he saw a child, he would stop. He would reach into his pocket, and he would give the child a picture of Jesus. He would thrust it into the child's hand, and then he would go on his way, not saying a word to the child. What he did certainly doesn't seem like that big of a deal. However, Nancy shares this small act of kindness made a world of a difference in her life. As 40 years later, she tells the story that she still has that picture that he gave to her. It's a picture of Jesus surrounded by a flock of sheep with a river running through the middle of the picture. And on the back of the card, you can read the shaky writing, Psalm 23. And it wasn't until Nancy was an adult that she realized what the man was doing. In his own way, he was planting tiny seeds of faith to the children that he would meet on the street. It worked for Nancy. His faithful commitment helped her have a faith commitment of her own. And her relationship with Christ, she believes, is a part of this man's witness and the seed that he planted when he gave her that picture of Jesus. You see, if we want to experience the kingdom of heaven in our life, it's like that mustard seed. I think we need to, to empty ourselves and to, and to just look for those small things that we can do to plant seeds in other people's lives. And it may be that, that we'll know, it may be that we'll never know. But God's kingdom works that way. It's where it's something small can become something really big in the power of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord God, help us to be faithful to you. Help us, Lord God, to seek you first, to strive for your kingdom, to be obedient to your ways. And help us, Lord God, to empty ourselves of everything that's not you. And help us to renew our commitment to you often. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we uh, begin our uh, liturgy for Holy Communion, uh, communion in our church is open. It's so open to everyone who's here. It's not necessary to be a member or even be a United Methodist. If you're here, you're welcome to receive a communion with us today. 
If you want to follow along in the hymnal, we start on page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The great thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join there and ending him. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my body of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would invite those helping me to serve to come forward.
we're going to bring out the bowls that have our elements all sealed up. There, there's two seals. The first seal is over the top, and there's a white uh, wafer. And then the second seal is over the juice, so just as underneath the wafer. We're going to try to hold on one side of these bowls, and then we'll allow you to have the other side. Um, any, that, any that's left over, just leave, just leave in your bowl, and we'll get that all picked up after the service. Does everyone have one? Anybody need one? Okay, so we'll lift that seal off of the wafer. We'll take the wafer out. The body of Christ given for you. So we'll peel the seal off of the juice. blood of Christ shed for you. Just put these back in the bowl. I would add that uh, if you would like to take elements to somebody that's not able to be here, I would, I would, you're, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, so. So that would be, if you'd like to, you're welcome to do that. I'm just going to set them here on the rail. Let's join in the prayer after receiving. <coughs> Let's pray. Eternal, Eternal God, God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. And grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we come to our offering time and we have plates here at the front on the, on the, on the ends. We also have baskets for the rail offering. Our rail offering for the month of September is going to go to UMCOR. That's the United Methodist Committee on Relief. And that's the, the organization within our, our, our general church, our worldwide church, that responds to disasters. And uh, we want to give to that to, to help them to uh, respond to Hurricane Laura that came through uh, between, between New Orleans, between uh, Louisiana and Texas. And uh, so we're going to, this month, uh, give to uh, UMCOR. And that's what the baskets are for. That's our real offering for the month of September. And I want, to read, uh, I want to read this verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. 
Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. For each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly. So in all things, at all times, having all that you need, so you will abound in every good work. If, uh, if you are able and you want to come by the office, it's open between 9 and 1 every morning, Monday through Friday, although we'll be closed tomorrow for the holiday. Or you can mail in an offering. Our address is Post Office Box 267, Normandy, Texas, 77871. And I invite us now to stand and let's sing together our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him all He has Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I invite you to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Either accept Christ as your Savior or renew your relationship with Christ. But, but all of us have an opportunity every day to keep the relationship we have with God going. And our hymn of commitment is Take My Life and Let It Be. It's $3.99 in our hymn.